All right, everybody, welcome back into Cherry Picking. Today's video looking at must-draft wingers for the upcoming fantasy hockey season. Before we get into that, as always, the video presented by FanDuel Canada, North America's number one sports book, the best place to be locking in NHL futures, and even to be betting on football if you're into that kind of stuff. Link is in the description below to download uh, FanDuel Canada, uh, so get on that. Six must-draft wingers for today's video. A couple guys in the early rounds that I think should be going a little bit higher, and then some guys, some late gems that I think are really worth uh, a draft pick. All right, so the first guy we're going to be looking at is Jake. Gensel on the Tampa Bay Lightning. I think this is going to be a massive year for Jake Gensel. I think we're going to see 50 goals now that Stamkos is gone and he kind of assumes that role of that leading goal scorer on that top line with Nikita Kucherov and let's face it he's playing with the best passer in the NHL. Probably one of the best passers we'd see, we've would see we seen over the last 15 or 20 years. So playing with Nikita Kucherov you get that automatic bump. If you look at his stats last year like he only ended up playing 67 games. 30 goals, 47 assists. Pretty solid but a relatively low goal total for him. Main and partly because it was his lowest shooting percentage of his career. He also played the fewest minutes I think we've seen Jake Gensel playing like four or five minutes per game, less than 20, right around that 19 mark. So I think we'll see Gensel be a lot more power play, maybe not power play dependent, but we'll see him, you know, produce on the power play more than we've seen, let's say in the last two years. He was phenomenal in the playoffs for Carolina. Really good last year and just a goal scorer, I think that's kind of flying under the radar because I think Tampa at this point continues to kind of be in that same same kind of avenue right there. So Jake Gensel, I'm going to say 50, 50 goals if he stays on the line with Nikita Kucherov the entire season and plays on that first power play because they've already talked about uh, in training camp uh, when they've run the first power play with Gensel in the same group essentially, but without Stamkos. There's just new ways they're involving him. It's not the one-timer, but there's new ways they're going to involve Jake Ansel where he's going to be able to score on that power. All right, the next guy we're going to be looking at, Adrian Kempe on the LA Kings. His ADP right now right around 50. So, you know, going in those earlier rounds and a guy I think that could explode again. Uh, you know, we saw that last season, or sorry, the season prior to that, but this past year, 28 goals, 47 assists. So a little bit assist dominant, which is a guy that's, you know, it was goal dominant just a year ago. Uh, still shooting the puck a lot, but I think this year we're going to see him shoot even more. A at this point, he's projected to play on the first line with Andre Kopitar and Laferriere. Byfield is on a different line now, kind of centering his own line. So he's playing with Laferriere, who's definitely not going to be the go-to guy. If you're thinking of who Kopitar is going to be passing to, it's going to be Adrian Kempe. So on that first line, I think that gives him even more opportunity. And then, as I mentioned um, in my earlier, or one of my videos this week, Andre Kopitar said that the Kings are going away from the 1-3-1, this neutral zone trap they've been playing for the past three or four years. Reasons why they've been a very good defensive team for sure, but they've lacked a little bit of, of explosion on offense. So I think they're going to be very explosive and a lot more aggressive offensively. I think that's only going to help, you know, speedy elite scorers like Adrian Kempe, Trevor Trevor Moore, Quinton Byfield. But I think Adrian Kempe is at the top of that list right now. This is a team that's been always a team with a high expected goals for, but a very low shooting percentage, I would say over the last couple years. Uh, throughout, if you want to look at it as a full season sample size, obviously there's stretches where they haven't been, but I think we're going to see Kempe kind of really play into this new aggressive offensive style that the Kings are going to play, uh, and you're going to see a lot of goals from it. All right, the next guy we're looking at, Cole Caulfield on the Montreal Canadian Canadiens. Right now has that left wing and right wing uh, like duality on, on Yahoo. His ADP right around 80th spot, so still going in the like 6th to 7th round, uh, depending on how many people are in your league. Cole Caulfield is in a very interesting let's say, historical spot coming into the season because of what happened last year. Played a full 82 games. He had over 300 shots. It's very, very seldom that you see a NHL player with 300 plus shots not score 30 goals. He had 28 goals last year, 37 assists, still a pretty decent season, still a career high in terms of for goals, but it was also a career high in games played. It was a career low in shooting percentage. He had a shooting percentage below 10%. Also very rare that you see someone have 300 plus shots and a shooting percentage less than 10%, because if you're going to be shooting that much, the only reason why you're shooting that much is because you're scoring. So just to put that into reality, the last person to have 300 plus shots and less than 30 goals was Jack Eichel. In 2018, 2019, he had 303 shots on goal, uh, or a shooting percentage of 9%. Uh, he had 28 goals that year. The next year after that, still with Buffalo at this time, still haven't got, hadn't gone on to Vegas. The 2019-2020 season, 227 shots on goal. He had a career high shooting percentage of 16%, and then 36 goals in 68 games, which was close to his career or his highest goals per game for a season. The next person who did it before him, Evander Kane, 2017-2018, he had 308 shots on goal. His shooting percentage was 9%, he had 29 goals. The next year, highest shooting percentage for a 70-plus game season that Evander Kane has had, 
11% with 30 goals tied for his career high. Tyler Sagan, 2016-17, 300 plus shots on goal, a shooting percentage below 9% in 26 goals. His year after that, career high, 335 shots on goal, shooting percentage 12%, and another career high of 40 goals. Kind of see what I'm saying here in terms of some of the, especially like when you lump all these players together. Jack Eichel, Vander Kane, and Tyler Sagan are all really good goal scorers. Cole Caulfield has an elite shot. If you, if, apart from the stats, if you watch him play, you know that he's an absolute elite shot. Last year, you could chalk up to the less than 30 goal season, I think puck luck. Because if you look at the if you look at you know the the metrics, his shooting talent above average last season was 27%. That ranked 10th in the NHL. His goals above shooting talent was negative 11. So you really could have tallied 11 or 12 more goals onto that total. That gets him to 40. Cole Caulfield will be a 40 plus goal scorer this year. I think there's also a little bit of a decoy at this point, considering I think a lot of people are like headlining the line A signing and uh, the Slavkovsky breakout. But I think Cole Caulfield's just kind of just in the back, just waiting to kind of come out and and um, produce this year for a huge season. So Cole Caulfield is a guy I'm drafting earlier than probably most would. But based on the historical trends and the the guys I just went over from the similar seasons Caulfield had or just had, I mean, I don't know how you don't take this guy in the first five rounds. All right, the next guy we're looking at, Matt Boldy on the Minnesota Wild. I, if you watch his channel, I've been pretty high on this guy for the last two seasons as well, despite him playing not full seasons. His ADP right now, right around 75, so a little bit lower than Cole Caulfield. I think the Wild are on the cusp of being one of the best teams in the NHL. Uh, and I think it starts with Matt Boldy and Kirill Kaprizov. Boldy has been such a good goal scorer, and he just needs to stay healthy, as I kind of mentioned at the top. And yes, I know he's already gotten hurt <laughs> in training camp. Something to keep an eye on for sure, but I'm still drafting him. I'm still drafting him at this ADP. Uh, if he doesn't come back from injury or if, if the injury tends to be something not serious, I draft him earlier. He's been a consistent guy who's at a shooting percentage of about 12%. Last year, 13%, 29 goals, 31 goals the year before that. Matt Boldy, Kirill Kaprizov, and Matt Zugarello all ranked in the top five last season in relative expected goals percentage. That essentially means that when they're on the ice compared to when they're on the ice, they're creating triple the amount of offense, especially Matt Boldy and Kirill Kaprizov. And Boldy's five-on-five on-ice five on shooting percentage last year was 7% and 9% the last two seasons. That's relatively low. So we're going to see, I think, this wild team explode offensively, be a little bit better defensively, like or be good defensively again this season. But I think we're going to see Boldy and Kaprizov at the forefront, which is why you can't miss on Boldy at this spot. All right, another guy further down the board, but Anthony Duclair, now on the New York Islanders, uh, left winger, his ADP is 182. Huge opportunity in my opinion for Anthony Duclair getting the opportunity to play on that top line with Matt Barzal and Bo Horvat which was solid last year those two guys played together kind of a mix of combinations but they, they were pretty solid Patrick Waugh comes in remember that last year took over team had a winning record made the playoffs with him as the head coach comes into his first full season and I think the whole system for the Islanders has changed you know under Barry Trotz and Lane Lambert very defensive first kind of wait and see I don't think that really tended to a guy like Matt Barzal's game and Matt Barzal, very similar hockey player to Anthony Duclair, just tons of speed. Patrick Waugh has always been transition-focused, always been heavily on activating his defensemen, which activates his wingers, his speedy wingers as well. Defense to create offense is kind of the idea there. So you have guys like Barzal and Duclair, these speed-based players, can thrive in an offense like this, flying down the wing. Horvat, Horvat or Barzal crashing the net, or the other one hanging in as like a third for the trailer with... You know, yeah, Horvath or Berzal, excuse me. His career high in the Panthers is 58 points, 31 goals in the 2021-2022 season. Now, I think if you look at the company he played with, that's probably the best company he played with other than, you know, he had a really good second season with the Arizona Coyotes where he had, a, a, I think, I believe 50 points as well. But this season that he played with Florida in the 2021-22 season, he played with elite players. And again, he's getting the opportunity to play with Matt Barzal and Bo Horvath two elite players. If you look at the guys he played with, Barkov, Verhage, Bennett, Huberdeau, those guys had great seasons, all of them that year. But Bo Horvat and Matt Barzal aren't far off from that. So I think Duclair will definitely be a huge beneficiary of this new system he's going to be playing in and being on the top line with these two very good forwards. So I think you have to draft Duclair. All right, so the last guy that I'm going to tell you guys to draft at the end of your drafts is Connor Zary on the Calgary Flames. Doesn't have an ADP listed. Last year, 63 games with Calgary in the NHL, 14 goals, 20 assists, a couple points on the power play, less than 100 shots relatively high shooting percentage which is you know you could maybe that's a little bit concerning but I think he's just that good I don't think he's gonna have 16 shooting percent like 16 percent shooting percentage throughout his entire season this year but I think a 12 or 13 and then you uptick that you know the shot volume and his ice time I think it's reasonable to say that Connor Zary could have a 30 goal season and if you look at it too he played last year with Kadri and Pospisil for pretty much, that was the most line combination he played with. Solid numbers. They had a 53% expected goals for percentage, 2.7 expected goals for per 60, creating a decent amount of offense. But for the last three years, the best line has always been whoever has played with the combo of Blake Coleman and uh, Michael Backlund. Been the most consistent line for the Flames for the past three seasons. If you look at back in 2022, when the Flames were a pretty solid team, 
scoring a lot of goals, making playoffs. Andrew Mangiapane scored 35 goals that, that season on whose line? Michael Backlund and Blake Coleman's line. As I mentioned, high shooting percentage last year for Connors Aries, definitely a little bit concerning, but he had 58 points, 21 goals in 72 games in the AHL the year prior to that. He's worth an ad. He's worth a stab late in the draft. You know, being put on this line and really being given this huge opportunity from Ryan Huska, it's worth it at this point. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. Let me know what you thought of Must Draft Wingers. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Shout out to FanDuel Canada for sponsoring the video, and I'll see you guys next week for some mock drafts.